This is the Kalmar Nickel, which is docked by the city of Newcastle. The history of this ship is what led to the odd pairing of Sweden and Delaware. And I know what you're thinking, it's a strange combination of territories from two different continents. While visiting the cities of Delaware, I started paying attention to the flags I saw throughout the streets. It was flags of several European nations, and they were hanging about on balconies, windowsills, and buildings. I found that odd since I rarely see flags of other nations lined up on the flagpole next to the American flag. The only other time you see a second flag is a sports team or the state flags, unless it's something like the United Nations. So I was curious and wanted to better understand the background on why these flags became such a part of the Delaware experience, especially the Swedish flag. I wanted to learn how this place right here sent a ship to sail from halfway around the world to a tiny area in America. I'm Jose and I'm searching for the story and how Wilmington became known as New Sweden. When I think of America, I think about its history and influences from other nations. It's what gives it that multicultural identity. In my own case, I can go by American, Latino American, or Hispanic American. And that's from my family's origins from a Spanish-speaking nation in the Caribbean one of the first to be discovered by Columbus. That's what makes the United States this unique melting pot. You might hear of Irish American, African American, Asian American, or Italian American, as we all trace our roots to the old world. But very rarely have I heard of Nordic or Scandinavian Americans, and that's a shocker to me. I grew up in New York City, what's known as the epicenter of the world, in Queens no less. There's no place like it on Earth. New York City's largest borough might be one of the most diverse places on the planet, containing over 800 languages. But there is a small population of Swedish Americans spread out across the country that make up just 0.2% of the population. Most of them are descendants from a big migration that took place in the 1800s. The more I researched, the more notable Swedish descendants I came across. Famous celebrities like the Wahlbergs, Matt Damon, and Emma Stone so why is Sweden barely mentioned when speaking about the European nations that came over to the New World? Let's take a trip to Europe. Welcome to the Nordic lands in Northern Europe and the subregion of Scandinavia, which consists of Finland, Norway, and Sweden. This part of the world contains some of the oldest nations in Europe, which puts Sweden at number 10, being established in the 1500s. The area was inhabited way before this time period, with researchers finding traces of life that dates back to 12,000 BC. Sweden is the larger of the Scandinavian nations and the fifth largest European country. Its capital is Stockholm, which is a beautiful metropolis in a country that is 57% forest. Stockholm is one of the places that I'm fascinated by and really want to explore. For example, during the month of June, it barely gets dark due to the midnight sun. This city is built across 14 islands and keeping up with my passion for geography, Stockholm is home to the world's first national city park. New Sweden begins in Wilmington in 1637 when the Swedish South Company established this territory. This new Swedish expedition was made up of Swedish, Dutch, and Germans. The government of the Kingdom of Sweden approved this new coalition, which would see Sweden's economic strength grow as it expanded its trade market with the rest of Europe. The Kingdom of Sweden hired a familiar explorer who formerly worked with the Dutch West India Company, the merchant Peter Manuit. Famous for the purchase of Manhattan, Menuit was the third director of New Netherlands, which is a large portion of the East Coast, and would later become the founder of New Sweden. Menuit was disgruntled with the Dutch West India Company as he released him from his services as governor and sent them back to Holland. Menuit was giving some of the new claimed lands to the patroons. Peter Menuit and the Swedish company set sail to the New World on the Fogel Grip and the Kalmar Nickel and through a rough and challenging journey, 
they arrive at Wilmington and what we now call Swedes Landing. This was the very first place the Swedish and Finnish made their mark, later spreading out in areas of Wilmington, Philadelphia, New Stockholm, and Swedesboro in New Jersey. So Fort Christina is where the first Swedish settlement occupied North America. This museum is dedicated to preserving the history of the Kalmar Nickel and the colony of New Sweden. Throughout the museum, we see memorabilia and a training deck for new sailors who become crew members of the replicated Kalmar Nickel that sits on the Christina River. We also see the Finnish homes from these settlements. Finland was part of the Kingdom of Sweden during that time and also came on board those ships that brought those first explorers. Their style of log cabins were better engineered than the English, leaving little to no room for wind to creep in within the crevices of the logs. It's such a fascinating museum, giving us a little bit more background to the story of New Sweden. So why did Peter Minuit choose Wilmington? The Americas, the famous new world referenced by European explorers. These early travelers constantly fought for the territories and resources from these lands. This territory was lands claimed by the Dutch. The area is surrounded by the larger Delaware River, the Brandywine River, and the Christina River, named after the Queen of Sweden. The Swedish and Finnish were able to build their settlement and go undetected for a couple of years before the Dutch caught word of their community, but the colony of New Sweden was short-lived. Peter Stuyvesant of the Dutch West India Company wanted to claim this land as the headquarters to the New World, but per Stuyvesant's demands, a battle ensued for the territory. The Dutch were looking to expand their fur trade along the Delaware River, Susquehanna Valley, and throughout Pennsylvania. After 10 days of conflict, the Dutch won the battle and would claim Fort Christina in 1655. But they would only hold on to the area for around a decade before the English caught wind of the news. England purchased the lands around Newcastle County from the Lenape Native Americans. And with so much activity between these European nations, England decided to take back their lands. This is a replica of the amazing ship and what led to exploring the history of this area. The English won the battle of Fort Christina and eventually claimed their territory, which was later given to William Penn, the father of Pennsylvania and Delaware. But the war with the British didn't just happen in the New World. A battle further loomed in Europe. Due to the ship's aging conditions from travel to Europe and America, it was decommissioned per request of Queen Christina and sold to a Dutch merchant living in Stockholm. The beauty of this ship is truly amazing. The merchant 
refitted the ship for naval warfare, installing 24 cannons around the ship. The Kalmar Nickel joined 15 other ships as part of an escort squadron to the Dutch Herring Fleet. And in June 1652, off the coast of Scotland, the Kalmar Nickel went down in a bloody battle, defending the fleet against 66 English ships. This battle would go on to be called the First Anglo-Dutch War. It's truly remarkable how the small things connect throughout history. A single ship would go on to become an icon, playing a role in developing parts of America while protecting the shores of the old country in Europe, leaving its notes in the history of America's first state. I'm Jose and I thank you for joining me on this deep dive on the history of New Sweden and the Kalmar Nickel. If you like what you see in a day, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share. If you want to learn more about the history of America, please stay tuned for the following video. Until next time.